This is the fifth estate winning headlines, your media police post. Brought to you by the Fort Hall School of Government, coming to you from Nairobi, Kenya. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning. But we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 13th of March, 2020, and I am Tujay. I am Tuom. And I am GK. And in case you missed the headlines, here they are. In the Star, Yatani warns of COVID virus economic shock. Mm -hmm. In the Daily Nation, Ruto allies plot to block Raila at BBI rally. Mm. And in the Standard, Ruto faces Raila test. Mm. So let us begin with, firstly, Welcome back. Welcome back to you. Um, oh, Were you, you in Wuhan? I was in Wuhan. Yes. Oh gosh, don't yes. cough. How please? are things there? Uh, they, are, they are eating snakes. <laughs> uh, uh, what uh, funny wild animals there. All right. <laughs> well, welcome back. Thank you. you. Friday the 13th has come and you have come back. And then we have the first case of uh, corona. coronavirus. Well, Ooh, uh, curious. Uh, yes. <laughs> there's a female who got it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, no, if anything, looking at the star headline, there's two things that we can highlight. Yes. First of all, um, that has not been covered in the headlines that happened today, mm -hmm. was a confirmation for the first case of coronavirus in Kenya. Yes. Okay. So this was from an unidentified female who traveled from the United States via Heathrow in London to Nairobi mm. um, on the 5th of March, I believe. Yeah. And in each stop, she was actually screened and tested and found to be... Um, okay. negative yeah she was yeah. not found to have the disease yeah. however of course we know that the incubation period is 14 days long mm -hmm. and so it was found later on that she did indeed have the virus yeah. okay. I think that they have now they're attempting to find her or they have found her to put her in incubation yeah. uh, okay. or quarantine okay um, very scary very very scary, very scary. Yeah. actually matter of fact I was only in Wuhan I was in Moscow <laughs> my goodness all right <laughs> well wherever you are why is Yatani telling us that there will be an economic <laughs> shock and is this a wise thing if anything before we get there, I do want to say that it was mentioned by the CS um, for health. Oh, yes, right. He did, yeah, exactly. He did say that everything should remain with business as usual. Yes. yes. And I think that, as we mentioned last week, as he came out as a new CS for health, he did come out very strong and very confident. And I think I believe everything he says. You yes, know, I feel yeah. very confident when he speaks. Yes. So when he says business as usual, I believe him. Absolutely. I think um, adding on top of that, when they say that they're going to ask Matatus to have hand sanitizer on deck ready for passengers. Why are you laughing? Um, that was to have some hands well, this is the thing. Kigali, outside the bus station, yes. you must wash your hands. Yes. There's a foot pedal mm -hmm. um, washing System. station. So yes. I think being proactive and things like that is going to be useful. It Absolutely. Helps. Yeah. But uh, I have some qualms with Yatani telling us. I actually like Yatani. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's telling us the obvious, that there will be economic shocks. They have been e everywhere else in the world. Yes. But you see this. Um, Italy. Which is the se which is the second most uh, the infected. country that has yeah second most third, infected after country after um, Japan actually is the second mm. and has a is biggest has the highest mortality rate of six percent of coronavirus. Now the reason why the Italians are dying like uh, fleas is because they have the oldest population in in Europe. Twenty three percent of its residents are <coughs> older than sixty five years. Okay. Three percent of Kenyans are over the age of sixty five. Mm -hmm. Now the mm -hmm. weather in Italy is about fourteen degrees uh, Celsius. Was it? Celsius. That one, and uh, it's it's very cold. Mm -hmm. Well, here it's about twenty four degrees. Yeah. Now I don't think there should be any need for panic, and I think what Yatani should be doing instead of telling us that there's an economic shock happening, is probably take advantage of this disease and tell Kenyans. Now, what we should be taking precaution of is uh, take advantage of the, of the warm weather, eat more protein, like in your machoma, and if you can, uh, have a little bit of alcohol. <laughs> it will sort you out. This well, is why yeah. you're not a doctor. All roads lead to your machoma for you. Um, but I think what he's saying is that we've already seen um, the, the, impact. You know, the, the impact mm. of imports not coming in from China, yes. things being right. delayed, things affecting our economy, and mm -hmm. maybe those are some of the things he's telling us yeah. to look out for already. Yeah. And Ken to be aware of. Yeah, already Kenya Open, that was supposed to happen, uh, the golf tournament has yes. been cancelled because yes. yes. a lot of the players that come yes. are European. Uh, are European. Um, yeah. So we're trying to, so those are the small things, I think. Tourism, and I, yeah, I think it's us. important to prepare <laughs> Kenyans for that economic shock mm. that mm. might indeed happen. Yes. But what a time for Africa that the, for the first time it is taboo for you to shake the hands of an European person. Yes. Yeah. Pound it, namaste, yes. do all the yeah. other things. Just fist bump. Fist no bump. thanks, I'm alright. Um, so, 
we do have a three-part criteria that we use to break down the headlines. We ask ourselves, is it topical or speculative? Is it repetitive or groundbreaking? And is it thoughtful or just plain lazy? Mm. That one is definitely topical. Yes. Um, however, let's do the other two. So we have... Politics. Daily Nation. We have Ruto allies plot to block Raila at BBI rally. Mm -hmm. And this is in the run-up to the BBI rally in Nakuru. That's mm. supposed to be on the 21st First, of yeah. March. And basically, the DP allied MPs have said, listen, this um, BBI rally will be different in that there will be a lot more inclusion. However, the terms of how this will be managed will mm. be dictated by those who are leaders within Rift Valley, yeah. mm. which essentially is saying, Raila, you're not supposed Step to be aside. here. And they also want the DP and the president <laughs> to attend the rally. Yes. Yeah. Um, I doubt the president will attend, given that he has not attended any of the others. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I think there's also a significance in moving um, the the rally from Eldoret, yes. which is yes. DP's backyard, yeah. to, to Nakuru, Nakuru yes. mm -hmm. which is uh, Lee Kinyanjui's backyard, yeah. who is allied to the to president and friendly to BBI. Yes. Um, so it'll be interesting. I feel like that weekend will be a turning point for politics as we know it in the run up to the election. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, very true. I, I, is there, did Botai Kagwe at any one point today say that uh, political rallies have been banned in Kenya? Would you know about that? Oh, he said, I think, uh, something about gatherings. Yes. I don't know about mm. banning of that rally, but yeah. it might very well affect. <laughs> yes, the <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. So yeah, who is a no go <laughs> so due no -go to so coronavirus? Yes. Yes. Well, um, let's see how it's handled. But uh, yeah, absolutely. basically, there's a lot of tension surrounding this meeting anyway. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, with you know the whole. And I think we can separate the tensions around the rally mm. from the yeah. nature of coronavirus, right? <laughs> yes. <I think>. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lord help us. All right, let's put okay. that in the package. Yes. <laughs> then we have Ruto facing the Ryla test. What is the Ryla test? Yes, the standard Ruto faces Ryla test. And he say, uh, what the standard is telling us is that Ruto is going through what Ryla went during the coalition uh, government. Mm -hmm. When Ryla said, Nusum Kate, Nusum Keka, he was not getting the privileges that should have been accorded to a prime minister then. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that is because there was something called a system. Mm. And the system fixed Raila enough to not make him president, but also not to accord him the privileges of his position. Yeah. Now, I have <coughs> a point to say. Let's see, the presidency is layered, my friends, and it is layered in two orders. One is a contractual, and second is a non-contractual. Okay. We all know that the deputy president is part of the presidency. Mm -hmm. That is in the constitution. Yes. Now, what is not in the constitution is something called the system. You see, the system has one reporting line, and that is to the president. It is so layered that the deputy president in the pecking order of things, should the president want, is down there in the pecking order. Might I disagree with you and say that sometimes the system doesn't always um, speak to the president? Actually, in, in Kenya's context, it does. And the only time the context, uh, I mean, the, 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 the system has mm. been overwhelmed was in 2002 when you had clever Mwai Kibaki pretending that he never really wanted the presidency and having all other political elite coalesce around him against Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm. That meant that uh, Kibaki had to play nice, had to play intelligent, but not seem like he really wanted the presidency. I think the fatal mistake that William Ruto is making is seeming like this thing will not get out of his reach. Too eager. Mm -hmm. he's, too he's, certain. he's too eager. Yeah. He's too eager. Interesting. Right. So who do we give it to between... Um, I think the Daily Nation, there's too much of an essay. Ruto allies plot to block Raila at BBI rally. <laughs> the star... Wow, 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 that's violent. As well is also a bit of a... Hey, wow. There you have it. The standard gives us our winning headline, Ruto faces Rhino Test. Mm -hmm. Onto the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country, where we also have a three-part criteria that we use. We ask ourselves, is it humorous or dry? Is it satirical or pessimistic? And is it effective or just plain lazy? Yes, and here you have a drawing of Wanjiko in a mask. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is talking to someone who is also in a mask. That is actually Gado. Do friends. you think? That is Gado. I thought it looked like Magufuli. No, no, it is Gado. <laughs> and uh, he's saying coronavirus question. And mm. uh, she's saying no markets. And ar across them is uh, people running Halter Skelter. Mm. People's LSE, London Stock Exchange, the Nikkei of Japan, the New York Stock Exchange, the Nairobi Stock, Nairobi Stock, Stock, Stock Exchange. Yeah. And uh, yes, and I think the context of this is the tumbling of value of mm, stocks stock markets, in yeah. global markets. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's because of coronavirus. Mm. I think, guys, if you have 
a disease that has a mortality rate of about 3%. Yes. And it's causing so much uh, turbulence. turbulence. This thing is engineered. And uh, I think we should be a little bit more clever than this and probably take advantage of this disease. Take advantage how? Tell Kenyans to go to Malindi and, uh, and, and uh, the world. Bring them to Malindi. You think coronavirus will stick in Malindi? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Are you, have you had people in Dubai dying? Saudi Arabia? Where people dying in 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 Iran and and China, where the where there is nine degrees. This is probably why you do not have any kind of medical degree. It's okay. <laughs> it's alright. <laughs> okay, we park that. Let's see what is Dula. This is my best cartoon. Here you have caricature of William Ruto and Uhuru Kenyatta's uh, factions, and uh, down there on Uru, William Ruto's side is Alice Ohome carrying Kipchumba Mukomen carrying. <laughs> Ed and Wale, who is carrying Moses Kuria, who is in turn carrying <laughs> William Ruto. And William Ruto is fetching the Ndungu Land Report mm -hmm. from uh, the archives. On the other side is Uhuru Kenyatta, who is uh, bending next to James Orengo mm -hmm. and has Renda Odinga climbing on a ladder uh, and he's fetching Western Land case. Mm -hmm. Second, the maize come and third, has the jet. And I think the point is this, uh, both factions have that on each other. But uh, I mean, who has more than who has one more or the other? The, yes. Yeah. Uh, but also, let's be. You see, did Uhuru Kenyatta underestimate William Ruto? I mean, in the sense, if at all, they have uh, Kosanad. Mm -hmm. You see, if Ruto comes with a land question to uh, the Kenyattas, then he will be making a point that uh, could not will probably be very destructive. Yeah, and that's what we said yesterday. We said he has something that could possibly galvanize a whole nation against yeah. the dynasties or the establishment or yeah. the mm. system yes. or however you wish however yeah. you wish to refer to them. Yeah. But very good cartoon. It, I mean they both have stuff. And, and I who think wins? Just, just is it a zero sum yeah. game here? Yeah. Yeah. Even as you describe the cartoon much. right now, I realize yeah. something that Ndula has kind of put into it that you might not notice on first sight. Yeah. As you mentioned how on um, Ruto's side, they're all carrying each other, yeah. yes. right? Okay. Whereas on the other side, you know, they are individuals oh. in their own right. They're yeah. detached. So I guess he's maybe talking about how the hustlers, they have to band together in order to, yes. you know, collect the archives or get whatever dirt they might need. Yes. Yeah. The dynasties in their own right are able to, yes. I mean, these three, they don't need each other. They uh, can probably absolutely. do it all on their own. On their own. Yeah. Good card. Uh, yes. Very, yes. very, very yeah. smart. Pocket. Very wise. Then uh, Ozone, yeah. we have a boxing match here. Yeah. Uh, so you have a caricature of Uhuru Kenyatta mm -hmm. with his, um, he's bandaged his hands before you put on the gloves. <laughs> and on the other extreme end, you have uh, Ruto, also same bandaged arms. Yeah. Um, however, mm -hmm. the people carrying them on each side, I guess, are their allied <laughs> yeah. mouthpieces. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have Orengo, uh, Raila. Raila. Uh, who oh, Waigoro, yeah, Mudavadi, Mudavadi yes. all carrying Uhuru Kenyatta, and yeah. this other side you have yeah. <laughs> Murkomen, <laughs> wow. you have Sudi, yeah. you have Aisha Juma, you, you had Muhammad Ali, you had Kuria, and, and Adam Dwale. And Dwale yes. Yeah, so very interesting cartoon, but you can see yeah. mm -hmm. the two principals perhaps are, are gearing for a fight, but are not quite They're ready because they don't yes. have their gloves on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the people who seem to be prepping them for this fight yeah. are their They're cheerleaders, yeah. 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 Absolutely. I think They're it's a good Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Good cartoon. So yes. between, I would say between the Daily Nation and the Star, who do we give it to? The so we can Tosca, no? Yes. Yeah. Da Daily Nation. Daily I agree Nation. With the Daily Nation. Daily Nation. Yes. you have it. The Daily Nation gives us our winning cartoon. Uh -huh. What is our final thought? Now our final thought. It is inspired by a book entitled Gulp. No. Gulp. <laughs> the Adventures of the Alimentary Canal mm. by Mary Mende. Two M. Since I wait, Mary from. Mende. Uh, she's called Mary, Mary Roach. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tua, um, since I know that you were watching us every single day while you were away on your trip in China, why don't you give us a summary of the week? Actually, not. I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> then I will give Support. the oh. summary of the week. Only watch <laughs> So in light of this coronavirus outbreak, we decided to look at some of the medical med medical micro histories mm -hmm. um, around the world. Um, so on Monday, we started with a book called The Ghost Map, the story of London's most terrifying epidemic and how it changed science, cities and the modern world by Stephen Johnson. And specifically looking at the cholera outbreak in London in the 1800s that began with a mother throwing her baby's soiled diapers in a cesspool and thereafter causing a cholera outbreak. Uh, epidemic mm. and it got us to question the importance of urban planning and its complex nature mm -hmm. with medicine yeah 
on Tuesday, mm. we looked at The Empire of Maladies, a biography of cancer written by Siddhartha Mukherjee, yeah. who took us through a thorough history and examination of cancer. Ultimately, we saw how um, through how though there were advances in treating cancer, there's been some medical stagnation when it comes to fighting the empire of disease that is cancer. Yeah. On Wednesday, we looked at The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat by mm. Oliver Sacks, mm. where we explored clinical tales and saw some interesting psychological and neurological cases. But we also saw how some people with brain abnormalities go on to do extraordinary things and are quite cognitively gifted. Mm -hmm. On Thursday, we looked at medical apartheid, the dark history of medical experimentation on black Americans mm. um, from colonial times to the present day by Harriet Washington, where we saw the dehumanizing practices carried out on black people in the name of medical treatment and research. Mm. Wow. And today, we're gulping. Gulping. We're gulping. Yeah. yeah, it was quite a heavy week looking at those medical micro histories. Yes. Uh -huh. So yes, as you said, Gulp: The Adventures of the Alimentary Canal, mm. written by Mary Mende. Roach yeah. in 2013. So in Gulp, we meet the scientists who tackle the questions that no one else thinks or has the courage to ask. How much can you eat before your stomach bursts? Why doesn't the stomach digest itself? Can wine tasters really tell the difference between a $10 or a $100 bottle of wine? Mm. Why is country food so appealing and can constipation kill you? So Mary Roach special <laughs> it's, it's a valid question. <laughs> so Mary um, Roach specializes in using humor to tackle um, science in some of so society's greatest taboos. Mm. In her previous books, she's looked at cadavers and she's looked at the afterlife. And this book um, brings her love of weird science to take us through a journey of the alimentary canal, mm. which is technically known as the whole passage along which food passes through the body from the mouth all the way down to <laughs> its exit point <laughs> during digestion. Yeah. So gulp begins with the nose and ends with the rectum, passing through in more or less of a chronological order. I think that's how she's organized the chapters, mm. right? Mm. Um, through the various stages of the human digestive system. And the author leads the reader around the globe to meet people fascinated by the intricacies of digestion. Mm. So I'll look at the first chapter, which starts with actually the nose, not even the mouth. Mm. Great. I hope one of you will end with the, the, <laughs> the, exit, the last part. <laughs> so chapter one, the nose job. Tasting has little to do with taste. Yeah. So we're introduced to people like Sue Langstaff who can read stink. Um, and she has the all important <laughs> job of practicing sensory analysis as it pertains to wine, beer and olive oil going bad. So her job is kind of like sensory forensics, mm. and she can identify off flavors and mm. detect um, problems in food or drinks. Mm. So she'll sniff them and figure out what has gone wrong with these items. Mm -hmm. So for example, in the book, she'll say, an olive oil with the flavor of straw or hay suggests a problem with burnt olives. A beer with a hospital smell is an indication that the brewer may have used chlorinated water um, even just to rinse the equipment. Mm. So maybe those are some Whoa. of the things you guys can take to the bar this weekend. Mm. So she goes on to explain <laughs> that you... Ask guys. Ask guys. It's Christian. like you take milk at night. Eh? I do. <laughs> so she goes on to explain that humans are better equipped for sight rather than smell. And in fact, we process visual inputs 10 times faster than our nasal inputs. Mm. So she gives an example of a study that was done. You have these 54 wine students who are asked to um, use standard wine flavored descriptors to describe a red wine and a white wine. Mm. In a second round of tasting, the same white wine that was used in the first round was paired with another red wine. Mm. But the first, but that red wine was actually the same white wine, but it was secretly colored in red. So they mm. were drinking the same red wine, same white wine, one was colored and one looked like it was white. Yeah. Yeah. So the students dropped the terms that they had used for the original white wine mm. in the first round of descri uh, description. Mm -hmm. And because of the visualness of how the red wine appeared now, they started to describe it differently. Mm. So they discounted the nasal information that they were receiving yeah. in order to use what visually Visual. they were yeah. seeing. Yeah. And so this is what we also do when it comes to the pricing of wine. Because a lot of the time I think that we as people are very um, intimidated by wine yeah. and how intimidated on how to describe wine yes. mm. but 
us lay people, we're not alone. Mm. Professional judges give medals in competitions that are actually very inconsistent. Mm. One statistician showed that one wine received the highest scores in one competition, mm. but then went to receive the lowest scores mm. in another competition. Yeah. Mm. And this links back to Roach's central question in the beginning. Mm. Can wine tasters really tell the difference between a $10, $10 bottle of wine mm. and a $100 bottle of wine? Because people can't seem to disassociate price with quality. Yeah. That's true. So essentially in this book, what Roach writes is that I don't want you to read this book and think that this is gross. Mm. She wants you to say, I thought this book would be gross, but yeah. it's actually very interesting. Yeah. Which I think she succeeds in doing. No, it mm. was very interesting. And yeah. in chapter six, she moves to down here mm. and she talks about saliva. Mm. Mm. And what makes saliva such an amazing substance? Did yeah. you ever think you'd, I would be saying that? No. <laughs> Never. So there's two types of saliva. There's the stimulated and the unstimulated kind. Mm. And basically stimulated saliva wow. makes up are you like salivating right now as we're talking? <laughs> but it makes up about 70 to 90 percent of the two or three um, pints of saliva that we actually generate on a daily basis. Mm. Mm. And stimulated saliva is called this because it comes from your parotid, para, parotid glands. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. So from your cheek to your ear. Yeah. And when you s that's why when you see a juicy steak or nyamachama, mm. suddenly mm. it wells up in your mouth and oh you're yes. feeling like... Tell, tell me about it. <laughs> you're like, yum. <laughs> There's some, you know, that is stimulated saliva. But the most basic function of saliva is actually to allow you to eat. It helps you, mm. whatever you put in your mouth, we help force it down. Yes. But it also does another thing. It neutralizes the acid in your mouth. Okay. Uh. So there's enzymes in your saliva that help neutralize... Um, mm. The, 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 the stuff in your mouth. The stuff in your mouth. <laughs> the, the nyama. Yes. Yeah. And basically, so sometimes, when, like if I was to drop some vinegar into your mouth right now, mm. immediately saliva would cut, swell into your mouth and you would to feel a warm that. swoosh to yeah. neutralize that. Yeah. And that's also how quickly your brain yeah. um, communicates mm. what is supposed to happen. Yeah. So dry mouth people are so disadvantaged. And dry mouth people, oh, <laughs> not so funny, but these are people who don't have as much saliva mm. or have gone through some radiation therapy. So they're not yes. able to produce oh, wow. okay. yeah. saliva with the good enzymes to help their mouth. Yeah. So Break they end down. up with really bad gums and lesions yeah. in their mouth, which yeah. shows you just how important saliva, saliva is. really saliva is, is, right? Yes. And if you've been wondering, in case you've been wondering why babies drool so much, yeah. it's because unlike us, we have the lower incisors to protect the drool from coming out. But babies don't have yes. that. But there's a secondary thing that saliva does. Babies are um, drinking milk in their first few months. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's 100% fat. Yeah. And so their saliva contains a lot more lipase than ours does. Mm -hmm. And w as you grow up, this tapers off. So yes, you have that's less true. lipase. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what was so interesting about reading this is that the main um, digestive enzyme in our saliva is something called amylase, okay. which breaks down starch. Mm. So that's why when you eat bread, mm. it automatically becomes sweet because the saliva is helping break, break down, down yes. the starch in your mouth. That's the sweetness that you feel. 2M is going through biology 101. He is. <laughs> and did you know, and this is something else I learned in the book, there's three active digestive enzymes in detergent that are also active in your mouth. Uh, so the next time you pour something on yourself, you could just spit on it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> there's lipase, um, which works on the fatty stuff. Mm -hmm. There's protease, which works on the protein. Mm -hmm. And there's amylase, which works on anything starchy. Yeah. Yeah. And interestingly enough, she yeah. tells us that in the art world, they actually prefer mm. to conserve mm. and clean their art pieces mm. with uh, saliva. Yeah. So they would get a cotton swab, put it in their mouth, yeah. and um, and clean whatever yeah. they need to. And this is because yeah. um, any other, a fragile surface, if you put any other um, solvent, yeah. mm -hmm. might actually dissolve any, like the water paint or anything, might or dissolve the fabric, yeah, yeah. and change the, the yeah. picture as it is. Yeah. So yeah, so saliva is very useful. And there's another thing that we learned. So saliva <laughs> has a lot of bacteria, yeah. mm -hmm. but it also can help you heal. It yeah. has yes. anti-clumping yeah. properties, which yeah. discourage bacteria from Yes. forming colonies forming. in your mouth, mm -hmm. yeah. which is why a wound on your skin yeah. may take longer to heal than mm. the one in your mouth. Yes. Yeah. And which is why when a dog licks its wound, mm. yeah. or a giraffe, yeah. or a giraffe yeah. it heals faster. So oh. maybe you could be encouraged to... If I'm being honest, the only person who's allowed to touch me with saliva is my mother. <laughs> if she's giving me like a... And interestingly, culturally, she has that conversation. Why somebody else's spit is so disgusting yeah. to you, yeah. right? Yet yeah. you will kiss your lover or yeah. your wife mm -hmm. or your husband or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but culturally, spit, like for instance, in the Greek world yeah. or even perhaps in the Kikuyu culture, yeah. when you spit on a child, yeah. 
um, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Mm. It's like keeping evil away, away. and whatnot. Mm. So yeah. Culturally, it also has those, those connotations. Yeah. Yeah. Can, yeah. can I ask you a question? Can saliva heal she didn't uh, say yes. broken relationships? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I'd answer. So <laughs> kindly, what did you what did you take away? <laughs> <laughs> My takeaway uh, from these guys was, you know, you can actually die from getting full. Like you eat. So the chapter is called Stuffed, mm -hmm. uh, the science of eating yourself to death. Wow. And, and they say uh, two ways this can happen. Either your stomach can rupture, mm -hmm. like katika proper, or it can block reactions like burping and, and, and vomiting. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, she says that the last, thing that you, the, the last thing you eat is what could probably kill you. And she gives an example of a young lady. She's 31 years of age. She was found in Miami dead. She was mm -hmm. a 31-year-old psychologist. And uh, on she, was, she, she was lying on her kitchen floor and her abdomen was swollen. Mm -hmm. So this, they decided to open her up. And when they opened her up, this is what they came across. So this lady had swallowed over two gallons of uh, poorly chewed hot dogs, uh, broccoli, is that how you say them? Yes. And breakfast cereal. Okay, two gallons. Wait, hold on, two gallons? Two gallons. <laughs> two gallons. One person. One person. Two gallons is seven and a half liters yes, of? Of, of, of poorly chewed hot dogs, <laughs> broccoli, <laughs> and breakfast cereal. So she was just swallowing. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> But what they also did find is uh, an empty box of baking soda. Mm. Now, the medical examiners were well, checking this lady out. Uh, they, they theorized that she could have died from this. You see, what the baking soda did, and baking soda is normally used for acid reflux and all that, mm. and cleaning out yeah. the stomach, is the baking soda pushed the poorly chewed hot dogs up. <laughs> I love how you just keep referring right. to the poorly chewed poorly, hot dogs. Poorly chewed hot dogs. They push it up against the wall. It's called the esophageal sph is, is sphincter. That's what they call <laughs> it. Okay. You said I'm not a doctor, so I'm not a doctor. That's why I'm saying like I'm saying it like that. Okay. And this this uh, esophageal sphincter is is based at the top of the stomach, and uh, what this thing did is it prevented her from releasing that which she could have released as gas mm, in, yeah. in terms of burping and vomiting. Yeah, yeah. What's the story here? Is that uh, when you're eating, make sure number one you chew it very well, <laughs> uh, number two you wash it down with a little bit of something, and it's it's it's, it's got nothing to do with it. a lady can can eat over two gallons of food. It's okay. I'm not telling you not to eat. Okay. But for as long as you lubricate your stomach, <laughs> Thank you. you are good to go. So uh, that interesting book. <laughs> On a day where we had a winning headline from The Standard and a winning cartoon from The Daily Nation, I want to leave you with this. Yeah. When it comes to pandemics such as the coronavirus, we are seeing the full force of the universe. Mm -hmm. It is bringing our dreams uh, to life, but unfortunately it is also bringing our nightmares a little closer as well and yeah. that's what you yeah. see with things like coronavirus yeah. so sanitize don't yes. touch your face and your hands mm -hmm. too much um and stay safe yes um please subscribe to our youtube channel find us on tv we're on go tv time feature and start times have a good weekend <laughs>